structure. Okay, now we have few more problems. Uh, this is the next one. Perhaps it is uh, problem number five or six. Five, five. Problem number five. Uh, show that. Show that the vector R double dot is parallel to. the osculating plane uh, this is an important property which we should keep in mind and then we have problem number 6 Show that when all tangent lines of a curve, show that if all tangent lines of a curve pass through a fixed point. The curve is a straight line. The curve is a straight line. This is number six. Next is number seven. Show that a regular curve, show that a regular curve with zero torsion, with zero torsion. Uh, lies in the osculating plane lies in the osculating plane and next problem number 8 if all the osculating planes of a curve pass through a fixed point if all the osculating planes of a curve pass through a fixed point The curve is a show that the curve is a plane curve. Show that the curve is a plane curve. All right. So problem number 5 is uh, simple, you just have a geometric intuition, uh, you know that uh, R double dot is parallel to osculating plane. Look at the equation of the osculating plane. The equation of the osculating plane for a regular curve R s, I am writing arbitrary osculating plane with b equal to 0 and b <coughs> if you remember in generalized parameter is given by uh, uh, it is in fact where b is where b in terms of generalized parameter is r dot cross r double dot upon 
modulus of r dot cross r double dot. So, if you have an oscillating plane, <coughs> then its normal vector is b, unit normal is b. If there is some vector which is parallel to the oscillating plane, then it must be perpendicular to b. And if you look at the expression of b, you can immediately tell us that yes, r double dot is perpendicular to b, because this vector is perpendicular to r dot as well as r double dot. So, in particular, r double dot, since r double dot is perpendicular to r dot cross r double dot which is parallel to b we find that r double dot is perpendicular to b and this implies r double dot is parallel to the osculating plane. because b is perpendicular to the osculating plane and r double dot is perpendicular to b and therefore r double dot is parallel to the osculating plane so this proves the assertion same thing for r dot, same thing for r dot also because r dot is a vector which lies in the osculating plane so same thing about r dot also okay Now, I wish you should also solve some problems by yourself. Okay. So, some of the problems, suppose I leave for you question number 6, you try by yourself. You see, uh, you can see uh, what is being said in this problem number 6. Uh, if there is a curve which is such that all the tangent line pass through a fixed point, this cannot happen unless the curve is a straight line. This you can easily visualize. Now, the only thing is you have to prove it. Okay. So, should I leave it for you to prove? Okay, you better try. Okay. And I can move on to number 7, because if I solve all of them, so what is the point? Show that regular curve with 0 torsion lies in the osculating plane. So, I have a curve C which is R equal to R s in natural parameter and in generalized parameter suppose its equation is R equal to R t and this curve is such that its torsion is 0. So, tau equal to 0 we are given that B equal to 0 sorry tau equal to 0 for the curve C for C and this equal to 0 means and we know that and we know that that tau is in fact modulus of B dash and since B tau is 0 more modulus of b dash is 0 and which implies that vector b dash is a 0 vector. Okay. And once vector b dash is 0, let me call it, uh, this implies the vector b is a constant vector. Let me call this constant vector as b 0. So, this is some constant unit vector. Okay. So, one thing is this, if the torsion is 0, the binormal is a fixed vector. This was obvious in fact. Now, let us consider, consider r dot b or b 0 is same for me and I will see what is the derivative of this with respect to s. Okay. 
Now this will be equal to I will consider the uh, derivative this will be r dash dot b 0 plus r dot b 0 dash since b 0 is a constant vector its derivative will go. So, this is r dash dot b and r dash is in fact the tangent t. So, t dot b or b 0 which is always 0 because unit tangent is always perpendicular to binormal. So, this quantity is 0 because t is perpendicular to b. Okay. So, what do you get that the derivative of this quantity is simply 0 and therefore, this quantity is a constant is a constant okay. and what does it mean? Uh, this if you look at it this is the equation vector equation of a plane this is the vector equation of a plane the position vector of an arbitrary point dot product with a fixed vector is 0 means this describes a plane. This is the equation of a plane. This is the equation of a plane. So, r if I look at this equation I will see that r is the position vector of an arbitrary point of a plane whose normal is b 0, but I am already given that r is a curve and therefore, this r is actually lie is a position vector of an arbitrary point lying in this plane. So, the curve lies in this plane is it right. So, this means this implies the curve r s lies in if I call this plane as plane number 1 lies in the plane 1 and this plane if you recollect binormal is orthogonal to which plane osculating plane. So, this is in fact the osculating plane. So, I will say that the curve whose torsion is 0 lies in its osculating plane. So, this is our conclusion plane 1 which is which is osculating plane. So, my conclusion let me write down yes yes osculating plane yes. So, that is what we were to show. So, this implies a curve with 0 torsion a curve with 0 torsion lies lies in its osculating plane. This fact an important fact we should keep in mind all the time. So, this solves problem number 7. Oh, this was 7 in fact. 6 I left for you and if you wish you can solve number 8 also. Uh, perhaps this will be little difficult. Eh? maybe it will be little difficult. I should give just a hint. <coughs> so, here if all the osculate it is parallel to problem number 6. The same question was tangent line and now similar problem we have for osculating. If all the osculatings are passing through uh, a fixed point and then the curve is still is a plane curve. <coughs> so, osculating plane for problem number uh, 8. Okay. So, 
oscillating plane oscillating plane for a regular curve whose equation is r equal to r s is given by r minus r s 0, but I am writing arbitrary, I am writing uh, oscillating plane at an arbitrary point. So, this point is arbitrary dot b equal to 0. Now, suppose it passes through a point whose position vector is capital R 0. Suppose it passes, this is arbitrary, this is arbitrary osculating plane. Since it passes, since all the osculating plane, all the osculating plane pass through a fixed point. So, we assume that the fixed point is R 0. In fact, it is not a point, it is the position vector of the point, but by the abuse of language we say it is a point. Okay. So, so we have we have the following relation R 0 will satisfy this equation. So, R 0 minus R s dot b equal to 0. Okay. Now, let me differentiate it. So, differentiating with respect to s I am writing in short. So, differentiating since everything is a function of s it is understood that we are differentiating with respect to s. So, when you will differentiate the bracket uh, the derivative of a fixed vector will be 0 and the derivative of the second quantity will be r dash s and dot b as it is okay. and plus r 0 minus r s as it is dot derivative of b will be minus tau minus tau n b dash we know is minus tau n. Here I have used the formula that b dash is minus tau n this we have done while discussing torsion. Look at the first term r dash you know is the tangent unit tangent and this is the binormal they are orthogonal to each other and therefore, this term will be 0. What you get is and the right side also is 0. So, what do you get from here is since minus times something is 0 means that quantity is 0 tau into r 0 minus r s dot n equal to 0 this is 0 means either tau is 0 or this dot product is 0. So, this implies either tau is 0 or r 0 minus r s dot n equal to 0. Now, when tau is 0 the curve is a plane curve which we know. So, this implies in the first case we get a plane curve. Okay. So, we were to show it is a plane curve. So, in the first case we showed ki yes if this happens it is a plane curve. In the second case uh, the first relation I will write down or in fact uh, okay, this is number 1 in fact and this is number 2. Uh, you may call this not this one, this one as number 1 and this number 2. So, if you look at 1 and 2 both what would you see 
that R0 minus Rs is perpendicular to B it follows from 1, R0 minus Rs is perpendicular to N also. So, from 1 and 2 if something is perpendicular to B and it is also perpendicular to N, so it has to be parallel to N. So, this implies 1 and 2 imply that R0 minus Rs is parallel to Okay, now this I will write down as now we can rub it off. Now this we write down as in fact R zero minus R S can be written as some alpha times. Okay, or uh, this implies R zero equal to, or not R zero. I'm sorry. R s equal to R zero minus alpha t. I should write down, but I will write down plus alpha t. Doesn't matter. Alpha is a scalar, so. It's so, look at this equation what will you say? This is the equation of a straight line. This is the line which passes through the point P 0 and it remains parallel to T. So, the curve which you initiate uh, said is a any curve whose torsion is 0 turns out to be a straight line. So, this is the equation of a straight line. This is the equation of a straight line that is the curve C is a straight line. Okay. So, it still it is a, so there were only two possibilities in both the cases the curve turns out to be a straight line. This proves our assertion completely. Okay. All right. Now, the next thing that I will be discussing here are the serif Rene formulas. So, this is the next topic. Serif Rene formulas. Uh, these formulas are in fact the expression of for the derivative of the vectors of Rene trihedron because since they are moving vectors we can differentiate them. So, the derivatives of T n and B uh, are nothing but the serif Rene formulas. So, we already know about the derivative of T we already know. that the derivative of t which is t dash is k n. Okay, this is the formula I will say formula number 1 and we also know the derivative of b that we learned while discussing torsion. So, also we know that that b dash equal to minus tau n this you may call as formula number 2. The only derivative which is not known to us is derivative of n. So, that we will find out. So, for the derivative of n of the principal normal n we observe that 
uh, in fact uh, all these things we are doing for a regular curve c so we have not mentioned but that is always there uh, we have a curve c whose equation in natural parameter is r equal to r s okay that is always assumed in fact and we also assume that this curve is regular now for the unit principle normal we know that it is a unit vector so n dot n is 1. So, we will immediately differentiate it with respect to s that will give me n dash dot n equal to 0 and this would imply that n dash if something is perpendicular to n in the space generated by t and b it has to lie in a plane of t and b. So, therefore, n dash must be equal to some alpha times t plus some beta times b. Okay. Now, where alpha and beta I need to determine. So, alpha from here if you see that here, here alpha I can write down if I take dot product with t in both sides alpha will be n dash dot t this term will be 0 when you take dot product only t dot t will be 1. So, you will get this similarly beta is nothing but n dash dot b. Now, I will determine what is n dash dot t. So, we also have know Uh, we also know that uh, n dot t is 0 because they are perpendicular to each other. Now, differentiate this also. So, differentiating this you will be getting n dash dot t plus n dot t dash equal to 0. Okay. So, from here you get n dash dot t dot equal to minus times t dash dot n and t dash is known to us it is my uh, k n. So, this is minus times k n dot n. So, this gives you simply minus k. So, alpha is determined. So, n dash dot t is minus k. So, I can write down this is minus k. Similarly, similarly n dot b is 0 because they are perpendicular. Again differentiate that will give you n dash dot b plus n dot b dash equal to 0. So, from here n dash dot b equal to n dot b dash is here in formula number 2 that is minus tau n uh, minus time in fact b dash is minus tau n. Okay there should be a minus sign. So, that becomes n dot n will be 1. So, it is simply tau. Okay, so, n dash dot b is tau and this means beta is tau. Alpha is minus k and beta is tau. So, substitute these values into here. Okay, so, that gives us that gives us n dash equal to uh, minus k t plus tau b or better look it will be n dash equal to tau b minus k t. This is formula number 3. So, in 1, 2 and 3 you have got the derivatives of t n and b. <coughs> if I write them together, 
So, writing all these three formulas together, we will be having <coughs> T dash first, it is k n, this I will call 1, then in the sequence n dash should come over here. So, tau b minus k t. Now, this I will call as formula number 2 and the third one is b dash which is minus tau n. This is our formula number 3. So, these three formulas together are known as serif Rene formulas. Okay. So, 1, 2 and 3 are called Sere Frene formulas. Uh, we can combine, we can combine these formulas as follows. What I will do, <coughs> I will write down T dash, N dash and B dash as a 3 by 1 matrix and uh, I will multiply it with some other matrix to T, N and B. Okay. So, I need a 3 by 3 matrix over here. So, that T dash comes out to be K n and dash comes out to be tau B minus K T and B dash is minus tau n. So, T dash is K n. So, is 0 K 0 and dash is tau B minus K T. So, 0 K T is minus K 0 and tau b dash is minus tau n. So, 0 minus tau 0. So, you can see all the three formulas together into a single matrix equation. So, I stop at this point and we will take up some application of these formulas in our next lecture.